Hello and welcome to the Lincoln High School course selection for rising ninth grade and new students. This presentation is going to have a lot of information. Not all of it might matter for your specific student, but we are going to try and cover as many things as possible and answer all the big questions you might have before you join the Lynx community. I want everyone who's watching this to know there is also a PDF of this presentation so that you can access any of the specific slides again if you want to look at it further or if you need to hit any of the hyperlinks we have embedded in the presentation. So without further ado, let's get this started with our agenda. Um, we don't have fancy little tabs as if this were a YouTube video, but you can feel free to bounce around this video if you're only looking for a specific uh, agenda item. We're gonna start off with a tiny bit of information for our ninth graders, only about three slides, then go through all of our course offerings by subject, and then the course selection process. At the very end of that, there'll be the drop-in support times so that you know uh, what two days we'll be holding live Teams meetings for you to drop in and get some help. So some of these specialty programs that we have here at Lincoln High School. HCC, students that are in the HCC cohort will be placed in their appropriate courses based on their academic history. Dual language immersion is the same thing. All of these are things that the counseling team at Lincoln knows ahead of time, and then we can make sure that they are in the appropriate classes once your kiddo gets to campus. As far as IEPs and ELL or MLL students, feel free to reach out to either of the emails on this slide in order to help with figuring out scheduling or any other information you might need to know for your student. Here is an example of a typical ninth grade schedule. Now, obviously this is going to be different um, based on what classes you took in middle school or especially if you're coming to us from a private school, but this is a pretty typical schedule. Feel free to pause the video and look at it if you like. Something to keep in mind, if you're planning to take a full year elective and a world language, for example, concert band, orchestra, choir, anything of that nature, you will sign up for both under your primary electives on the source or on the form sheet if you're coming to us from out of district, and then you can defer health and PE to a future year. Those are still graduation requirements, but we'll talk more about those specifics later on. For high school credits that you might have earned in middle school, this is going to allow folks to basically start at a different point in the course sequences and get earlier access to advanced coursework. Some of our students come in starting at Algebra 1, some of them Algebra 2. Some kiddos are gonna do biology freshman year and some of them are gonna do physics B and chem B. It's okay, everyone starts off at their own place. You're still gonna to need to earn 24 credits while you're here. You're still gonna to need to do all the same graduation requirements. It's just going to impact which courses you sign up for and what you start doing when you first get here to Lincoln. So without further ado, here is the course offerings by subject. There's also a course catalog on the LHS page that goes into more depth for all the electives specifically because we are offering dozens and dozens of electives next year. And I'm not gonna make you listen to me describe all of them. So I'm gonna hit the highlights and then feel free to look at more when you have the time. For our ELA sequence, ninth and 10th graders, there are no choices there. You're gonna do intro to comp and lit and then world lit and comp. 11th and 12th grade is when you first get some English opportunities to mix things up if you decide to go with AP or advanced placement. For graduation requirements, every student needs 4.0 credits of English. That is a non-negotiable. If you have no idea what AP is or want to learn more, feel free to reach out to your counselor. And that's something that we talk to freshmen during the freshman class meetings when they first get here, since typically only sophomores and up are able to access those courses. For social studies, you get a little bit more options. Everyone starts off in ninth grade with just doing one semester of world history. So future ninth graders, when you see your schedule, if you don't see world history first semester, don't worry, it's probably second semester. If you're concerned, feel free to talk to your counselor. Once you get to 10th grade, AP Human Geography is often the first AP course that people take in high school. It's a great course, but if you don't wanna do that, the World History 2 and 3 or the World History 2 plus LGBTQIA World History 3 are all options. Now you can mix and match the World History 2s and 3s, but you can't do a semester of AP Human Geo and then the LGBTQIA World History 3. So just know if you want to do that AP course, you're locked in for the year. Moving along for 11th grade, 
AP U.S. History or our standard Ethnic Studies U.S. History, and then 12th grade American Government, which is just one semester, or AP Gov, which is a full year. For those that take American Government and have pushed out those year-long electives and still need health or PE, oftentimes we have our seniors take a health class since they have that free gap with that 0.5 from American Government. Science is where things get a little bit more confusing, but it's a good kind of confusing because we have so many different options. For most of our new students and those that are about to be freshmen, you can just focus on the top left of this slide. If you did eighth grade science at your middle school, then this is going to be easy for you. You'll come in in your freshman year, you'll do Phys A one semester, Chem A the next semester, and then your sophomore year biology, and then junior year, you would start to have some different options with your science courses. For those who have already taken Phys A, Chem A, and Biology in middle school, you're going to have a little bit of flexibility with that science option. And that's something that we would almost recommend you have a conversation with your counselor about because some colleges are going to expect a full year of physics and a full year of chemistry. And so if you're not quite sure what to do with science, feel free to reach out. For those that are a little bit older and looking at all of our advanced science options, AP Chem, AP Bio, AP Phys, a couple of different types, AP Environmental Science, tons of AP options. Genome Science, while not an AP, is one of the most popular classes that we have here, taught by an excellent, excellent teacher. And then there's some alternate sciences as well that you can mix and match. So if you've already done Phys A, Phys B, Chem A, Chem B, and Bio, you can just do 0.5 of Northwest Geology, 0.5 of astronomy, mix it up. Students only need three credits of science in order to graduate, but we always recommend that folks take four years of science if they're thinking that they want to do a four-year university or college as part of their high school plan. Finally, math. Again, we've got a little bit of flexibility here with those advanced math options that you see in the far right, but the math sequence is a little more straightforward because we don't have quite as many types of math for students to do. And so normally people are pretty tracked on with what type of math they're going to take. Honors math is one thing that we do want to go into a little bit more detail on. We have separate math classes with more rigor and deeper learning for Algebra 2 and for Pre-Calc. So you can take Algebra 2 standard or honors and Pre-Calc standard or honors. Something that everyone should know Students that are currently in geometry are placed in Algebra 2 and must specifically choose Algebra 2 honors when they're selecting courses in the source or if you're from out of district on Microsoft Forms. So keep these things in mind for honors. There's higher grading standards and a faster pace. You're often going to have more academic skills expected of you. The teachers are going to have a higher expectation for where you're at with those skills and you're going to be committing to this class for the whole school year. We have a lot of students at Lincoln right now. It's really difficult to move full year classes around in the schedule. And so when you sign up for these honors classes or these AP classes, you are committing to that class for the year. And it's very possible we won't be able to get you out of it. Just wanna be blunt with y'all. So keep that in mind when you're making these decisions, um, but trust yourself, you know yourself the best. Um, you and your family can talk and make that decision about what works best for you. On the source, again, this is specifically for the SPS students, there's going to be a link on the source that says Algebra 2 Honors specifically. So it should be pretty clear when you're going through it, that's how you're going to sign up for Honors. PE, this is one that I know people reach out to us a lot about. The graduation requirements are 1.5 credits of physical education or three classes and 0.5 credits of health. We try and sign up all ninth graders unless you're doing the two full year uh, elective courses. We try and sign up all ninth graders to take personal fitness and health. That way we can knock out half of that requirement. We don't offer as a district waivers for health or the PE competencies. Even if you didn't take a PE class, and you were able to waive it all or you did sports through Lincoln, you would still need to take a PE competencies test before you graduated. Online courses are not an option for meeting this requirement and you are going to have to make sure that this is done. We've got a bunch of seniors right now that are trying to get this sorted out. It will stop you from graduating. Make sure that you get this sorted. You can waive up to one credit of PE 
if you are on the football team or the softball team or the flag football team, there's a lot of different options. So if P classes isn't your bag, there's a lot of ways to work around it, but we try and make sure that all of our freshmen take a personal fitness class. That way they're already on track to get all their graduation requirements sorted. When it comes to waivers specifically, there's a lot of different ways to look at them. We recommend that you talk to your counselor and figure out if it's going to apply for you or not. You can inquire more about this policy once you are here on campus your ninth grade year, and your counselors will be more than willing to help you out with that. So don't stress about it too much right now. For world languages, it is not, and this is a common misconception, it's not a graduation requirement that you have two credits of a world language, but it is recommended because of CATER, which is essentially the expectations for four-year colleges and universities. So if part of your post-secondary plans include going to a university, we highly recommend that you get these world language credits knocked out early. The languages that we are currently offering at Lincoln include Japanese 1 through AP, Spanish 1 through AP, and French 1 through AP. So you can very easily have a language course all four years of your high school career if that's something that you're interested in. For those of you that are coming to us from a dual language immersion school, even if you've taken a million Spanish classes or eight Japanese classes, set yourself up in level three of that course, and then our teachers work with your old teachers to make sure that you are placed in the correct class. So the placement will be adjusted later and communicated to families. Sign up for Spanish three or Japanese three if you have been part of those dual language immersion programs. If you're not sure, ask your current school school counselor, and they should be able to help you with that. For our visual and performing arts options, we have band, orchestra, choir, theater, the current as of 22-23 school year folks that are running those are on the screen right now and you can reach out to them. You will be placed following auditions, band and orchestra both require auditions since there's different levels to those. So whenever you are registering for those classes, please choose concert band, concert orchestra, or concert choir and then you will be placed appropriately by the director. Every single student in SBS needs at least 1.0 credits of art, and that could be knocked out by any of these classes or a number of other classes if you're not into any of these. CTE, or Career and Technical Education. Now, many classes at Lincoln are going to count towards meeting this requirement, and you can see all of them in the course catalog. We try and get all of our students started off on the right foot with a human-centered design course that will count as 0.5 credits of CTE and can help students figure out what path they might want to go moving forward. We have business courses. We have uh, graphic design courses. We have photography courses. I could keep listing things forever because there's so many different options. I won't bore you. Feel free to look through the course catalog. We have an incredible selection of CTE courses and incredible teachers in all of those. So, what is this process actually going to look like for you? Well, once you've looked through all of the classes and you have a good idea of what you want to do, you are going to have a few different extra things that might not feel important, but are very important. And one of those is alter alternate electives. The alternative electives are especially important if you're coming into us as a freshman or sophomore, someone that's a little bit younger because the seniors and juniors are going to get, for lack of a better word, first dibs on some of the courses. Um, some, of our, uh, some of our elective courses are extremely popular, and sometimes it's hard to have enough space for all of them. So we want to make sure that any alternates you get placed in are things that you are actually interested in. Uh, the start of every year, people come to us and they say, why am I in this class? I hate this thing. And then we have to show them the piece of paper where they selected that as an alternative. So please take your alternate seriously, especially if you are going to be a freshman or a sophomore, because it's possible that you'll end up in one of those classes. The courses you choose as alternates must, must, must be different than the primary electives. You cannot uh, hack the system by putting in beginning drawing and painting as your primary and alternate. It doesn't give you a better chance of getting that course. It just means that you are going to end up in a random course if we don't have space in that class for you, which is not what any of us want. For folks that are signing up for the first year of a world language, if you want, make sure that you have an alternate world language as one of your alternate choices. So if French 1 is your primary choice, then either Japanese 1 or Spanish 1 would be your alternate. 
we normally have enough space for everyone, but we just like to be clear um, just in case we need to go that route. When registering, here's just a few more reminders, mostly for our ninth graders that are coming in. You will choose one credit of electives and at least one credit of alternates. You are going to see a discrepancy between the course catalog and the classes available. That's because some of these electives are already full. We've been doing the course registration process here at Lincoln with all the folks that have been here this year. And so for our new students, you're not going to get the exact same options, unfortunately. Once you've been here for a little while, you'll have the opportunity to take as many classes as you like of these electives. But for your first year, you're not going to be able to get every single option. Another big one that we get asked a lot is about doubling up in math or science in order to um, get through that a little bit quicker or get to advanced coursework. There is not enough room to double up in math or sciences. There are ways for students to advance through the curriculum. If you want to know about those, feel free to reach out to your counselors. We'll be able to help you out. And once again, just to reiterate, because the language teachers asked us to reiterate a bunch, dual language immersion students who have come from a school with that specific program should choose Spanish 3 or Japanese 3 when choosing those courses, and then they will be placed later following an assessment so that they are in the correct level based on their learning. Now, if you are coming from in-district, if you're at another SPS school and you are an eighth grader, you're going to do this through the source. Um, current SPS 10th and 11th graders will complete registration through a form on the prospective student page of the LHS website. This is going to be opening up Monday, April 19th and closing by 5 p.m. on Monday, April 24th. If you are 10th, 11th, 12th, transferring from within SPS, as I just said before, there is that form on the LHS website on the prospective students pages. You are going to be invited to a new student orientation in August, and you can meet a little bit more individually with some teachers, some other staff, and some counselors that are going to be there and help you get a lay of the land and figuring out what's going on. We'll use your records from your current school to make sure you have a schedule that meets graduation requirements. And if you have any specific questions about that process, please reach out to Lincoln Counseling at seattleschools.org, and then we as a team can kind of help you out. If you are coming from outside of district, whether in Washington state or a different state entirely, then you're gonna to go to the LHS website, look in the prospective student page and register with Microsoft Forms. So if you are selecting out of sequence courses, send the following items to Lincoln Counseling at seattleschools.org. Uh, introduction with the student's name, student's current classes in their out of district or out of state school, and a current schedule or report card and then whenever you can, please send the most recent transcript you have to that same Lincoln Counseling website or email address, pardon me. This is going to help us make sure that your student ends up taking all the classes they need to to graduate. And since other districts and other states do things in different order, we just like to make sure that we're not making your kid take geometry two times in a row, for example. So please reach out as quickly as you can, and we can make sure that your first year at Lincoln goes off smooth. Here is going to be just a little breakdown of what the student source uh, account and process looks like. Some of you may have done this before, but if this is your first time, we're going to kind of go step by step. If this is old hat, feel free to skip ahead uh, or get started on it if it's time for registration. So number one, log into your student source account. Um, since the parent and guardian source account is view only, parents, y'all won't be able to sign up for classes for your kiddo. You'll make sure that the kiddo is in the room, or at least you have the kiddo's account and then put that in. Uh, we recommend using full screen because sometimes this page gets a little wonky if you're in windowed. So go ahead and set it to full screen and get started. Uh, number two, you're going to click on class registration on the left side of the screen. When the page opens, you're going to see a list of the subject area categories, math, science, et cetera, et cetera. And in each of those sections, you're going to be able to choose class. Some of them are going to be preloaded. Some of them, if we know you're coming from SPS, the eighth grade students have been preloaded because if you've been doing eighth grade math, you're going to be doing algebra one. If you did eighth grade science, you're going to be doing Chem A and Phys A. If you have preloaded classes that for some reason you've already taken before, make sure and reach out to Lincoln Counseling at seattleschools.org. But a good chunk of this for our rising ninth graders should already be done.
Next, on the pencil icon, you can click that to see what is available in that category. So for electives, you're going to see a lot of options there. Or if you're about to be a junior or a senior, choosing your English class, your history class, your science class, you'll have a lot more options there. When you click on that little pencil icon, it will show you all the things that are available. And again, alternates, don't forget about them. I'm gonna keep saying it a million times. Please, please put in alternates that you are interested in and excited about, because otherwise you might get stuck with random classes that we have left over. Once a course window opens, if applicable, don't forget to click on the page numbers at the bottom because there are a lot of classes available at Lincoln. Uh, sometimes people don't open it all the way and they think we just have that one page of electives and they end up choosing things they don't want. It's all in alphabetical order. If there's something that you can't find or if you think there's something missing, please feel free to reach out and let us know. But normally this goes off without a hitch. Finally, to select a course, click the checkbox uh, left of the course name or you can click directly on the course. And when you have selected all the courses you want in a given category, click the OK button to save your selection. That'll be at the bottom right. You can't see it on this screenshot, but it'll be at the bottom right of that window. If you don't click that OK button, it will not save your selections and you'll have to do it again. Finally, once you are certain of all your selections, you can make sure to click Submit at the bottom of the page to save your selection. So once you've gone in and hit the little pencil icon for each of them, you can go ahead and click Submit. If there's a little exclamation point, don't submit it yet. Make sure that you have selected all the options. Sometimes people forget to get a second semester of a world history. They forget to choose which world history three they want, or they maybe did 1.5 credits of an elective instead of 2.0. Just triple check that you've got everything you want, make sure it's safe, and then hit submit. If anything goes wrong during this process, feel free to reach out. And we really look forward to having you as part of the Lincoln High School community starting next year. This is a picture of your Lincoln Links counseling crew. I'm Misty Chandler. I'm the first one on the left, and I'm the registrar. Hi, I'm Mr. Lim, and I'm standing to the right of Ms. Chandler, and I'm a counselor. And to the right of him, I'm Mr. Rebus, another counselor. On Mr. Rebus and Mr. Malaki's shoulder, I'm Mr. Aiken, the counseling secretary. And on my shoulder uh, with, of Mr. Aiken, that's me, bald-headed Mr. Malaki. <laughs> and to his right, I am Mick Donato. I am also a school counselor here. We can't wait to meet you. Finally, we want to invite anyone who's interested to our virtual drop-in support for families. These are going to be taking place two separate days. First, Tuesday, April 18th from 5 to 6 p.m. And then also on Monday, April 24th from 12 to 1 p.m. Counselors will be available during Microsoft Teams meetings to answer any questions you might have. Links for those team meetings will be on Schoology page, and they'll also be on the PDF version of this presentation. If your student's last name is between A and K, you'll have a chance to speak with Mick Sonato and Mr. Lim. And if your student's last name is between L and Z, you'll be in a room with Mr. Malaki and Mr. Rivas. Please make sure you read through the whole course catalog and materials before showing up to this event, and we look forward to meeting you.